I saw some rumors coming out about Malik Neighbors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Saw some rumors. That's draft season. That sucks for Malik. Yeah. yeah. That that has to happen. For it's sure. just like, I guess these guys just have to go into a hole and act like it doesn't exist. This happened to C.J. Stroud last year. Yep. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this guy, he's the worst we've ever seen. He's an idiot. Yeah, he's a moron. In between the years, what do you want, scrambled eggs or a quarterback? <laughs> you tell me. You want scrambled eggs? C.J. Stroud. You want a quarterback? You go elsewhere. And then what C.J. Stroud do? Ah, he has the greatest rookie season of all time. Throws the least amount of picks. Seemingly can break down a defense better than any rookie in the history of the NFL. Feels like in between the years, just fine. Well, that particular test, it was one thing taken out of context and his life was ruined for about a week or so or maybe two months months or so, mm -hmm. saying he was dumb. That's draft season. It's all bullshit. Could potentially be coming from a team that actually loves the player more than anybody else in the entire NFL because they want to get bad stuff out there because maybe it'll creep in and, you know, we'll pass on that guy. And what does he do? Oh, he falls to us. Yep, gotcha. So that's like a dirty game that takes place, but it's very, very, very real. Now Malik Neighbors not good for a big city. Whoa. That's what they're saying about him. But yeah. he was also on a IG Live with Jaden Daniels. Mm -hmm. And he, he said he knew what was going to happen with Jaden Daniels. Yes, yeah. he did. Now, I will say Malik Neighbors doesn't know shit. And this particular <laughs> IG Live was very dumb. But I will say I enjoyed the way Jaden and Malik were kind of dealing or talking to each other. Obviously, it's good for Jaden Daniels to have teammate obviously love him. But for everything that was coming out about Malik Neighbors, seems like him and his quarterback very good. Very good. Terms. Oh, yeah. yeah. Here's an IG Live. Are these? We don't have it. We do not have it. Anyways, Malik Davis says he knows Jane Daniels is potentially going somewhere, and everybody's trying to cryptically read through his quote. Uh -huh. You have him going back to New England because of what he said. Yes, I do, because the what, what Neighbors basically alluded to is that he'd be reuniting with one of his old best friends. And obviously people point to Ayuk because there's been this Ayuk-Daniels connection that has kind of blossomed or at least become yeah, much more Yeah, this is Malik public. Neighbors talking about the draft. Yeah, mm -hmm. talking about where Jaden Daniels will go. Okay, so Ayuk is currently... Yes. Which, in a spot yeah. right, that has a quarterback. Yep. Under contract. So it's going to be a little bit difficult, potentially, to get Jaden Daniels. But what the hell does Malik Neighbors know? He Shit. thinks he's going back to New England. Yeah, maybe. because Kayshawn Butte, who was the number one receiver for Jaden okay. Daniels two years ago, uh, above Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr., he was drafted last year to the New England Patriots. Obviously, that you, you could assume that a quarterback – and a leading wide receiver of that quarterback in the season, they would probably be best friends. Kayshawn Butte being that guy mm. in New England, New England having that top three pick. That one makes a sense. lot of people. Yeah, but Brian Kelly told us to go to Washington. He yeah, did. exactly. Told us to go to Washington. He the did. Was Which Antonio might... Pierce at Arizona State when Jaden? Yes. Came? Also, okay, Antonio maybe, Pierce. maybe he. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's mm -hmm. good. Maybe Which is the. Papers. Yeah. Talk to Pierce, maybe yeah. He, he don't know shit. Like, <laughs> but yeah, sure. But I do like the way they interacted with each other. Uh -huh. yeah, I, I'm gonna course. say so. Everything that's being said about Malik, yeah. I think, is bullshit. Until he's now, granted, everybody can be a piece of shit. True. Yeah. I mean, that literally yeah. can become the case, especially whenever you get into the NFL and you get money. Like, there's a chance that people change the entire direction of who they are yeah. as a human. Could get lazy. How are they going to handle money? How's everything that's going to be around them? There's a chance that could happen to anybody. But just yeah. projecting that now is yeah. a wild thing to do to somebody. And that's that's what a lot of these decision makers do, you know, behind the scenes, whether it's GM, former, current GMs. Like, they talk to each other, you know, going through the process. They're going to call everybody, your family members, your coaches, your the custodian, all these things, and find these different things about you. So you do know there is a higher or a lower percentage on a certain amount of guys, but I, I think it's definitely um, – uh, BS narrative putting out there right before the draft. And it's kind of a cycle with him. N neighbors a few weeks ago, yeah. hey, this this wide receiver one. I know Marvin Harrison right, Jr. Right. is out there, but right. this is the guy. And now we're back at, hey, you know, do you want to give him a ton of money in the big city? Probably not. So it's just part of that cycle. Yeah, I mean, looking back on it, I'm happy I didn't go to a big city. I, I would have been. I would have been in a bad spot. <laughs> a lot of options. Too many options would not have been good for me at the time. I would have been having too much fun. I think we figured that out here in Indianapolis. But projecting that, I don't think anybody would have been like, yep, can't have him. You know, it's a, uh, it's such a roll of the dice this entire draft. How come Malik Neighbors knows who's drafting Jaden Daniels but none of the rest of us do? Uh, is, is that real? Is Jaden Daniels actually kind of set in stone coming to New England? And also, is Malik Neighbors uh, a problem for some of these teams now after two weeks ago being the number one receiver and now he is possibly going to the Colts at like 18? And tread lightly okay. here because we will bury you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's let's get to the, the Malik Neighbors past stuff first, okay? Um, I don't think... I don't think that the te that teams will spread misinformation about a guys to hope they drop. I know some people will say that. I don't think that happens. What does happen is teams need more information. I don't really like the, you know, off the field, like teams are trying to figure out where players are right now. Like is Malik neighbor someone that teams need more information about? 
yeah, like there was a charge at, I believe it was Mardi Gras a couple of years ago. Does that make him a bad person? Like, I don't think so. He's an unbelievable receiver. I, I just, they Mark. need information. There are people who, players who are a problem, and there are players who make mistakes. And what these teams try to do now is figure out which are which. I have not heard of Malik Neighbors being in the bad guy category. I have not. But I know teams are trying to figure out where he stands now. Okay. Well, this seems like a bunch of draft bullshit that we're going to have to continue to get mm-hmm. through. But yeah. if you're a Mardi Gras. Every year. If you're a Mardi Gras as a young adult, I yeah. mean. Come on. Yeah, come on. There's a chance yeah. you could make a mistake. Yeah. Every once in a while. Mm-hmm. It's kind of being forced in this uh, form of a hurricane, I believe is what they call them. Mm-hmm. And it's, I mean, it's a Long Island it's, times six. Yeah. I think there's actually. I've been there. Yeah. I've been there. Bet you have. Yeah, I bet you have. And there's a couple nights where you were there, but your soul (laughs) wasn't. And that's what we're talking about Mm -hmm. with Malik Neighbors. Got to judge a little bit differently back in the day, but I I, I don't like this shit coming out just for, you know, bullshit reasons. Go ahead, AJ. Well, I. Go ahead. Well, hold on. Let me ask the other thing first. The Jaden Daniels, um, I do not know where he's going. I do not. And I have a hard time understanding, a hard time believing that anybody does. Really, the only thing that matters is, is he going to Washington? Because if he's not going to Washington, and look, he is a quarterback that I think Cliff Kingsbury would like. He is highly touted. He's got a high ceiling. Seems to be a very good person. Draft process has been interesting because he hasn't gone to all the different places. Um, But it's really just, does he go two or does he go three? And if he doesn't go two, then it gets really, really interesting because then I think the Patriots' phone absolutely lights up. Ooh. Oh, but the Patriots won't want him. Okay, interesting. Yeah, what's that about? Interesting. Well, no, it's just, no, it's just you know, how much are you going to offer? What's it worth? Eight first-round picks. Eight. <laughs> okay. Probably gets done. Okay. Okay. And Justin Jefferson. Go ahead, AJ. <laughs> Ian, when you're, when you're calling and talking to these execs and GMs and people in the front office and agents – and you're extracting information from them. How much information are they trying to get from you? I would assume they want to know too what other teams are telling you, just to try to you know jockey for a position. Yeah, that that is a lot of it. And there's you know I try I toe the line between sharing what I can. Obviously, you never want to burn anyone. And I always tell people like, and I, I tell you guys the same thing. I will never go into a draft process and say I truly know that this will happen because. Even the people really, really close to you, you know, they're not going to lie, but they may mislead or they'll say, like, I can't go there. I just, I'm not going to. So, what I'll generally do is I'll ask people, I almost will never say, Who are you taking? But I might say, like, What areas are you looking at? Or I'll say, like, What do you hear about the teams around you? And it's like a big gossip sharing circle. And I, I don't know if you guys know this, I'm a little bit of a gossip. Um, and I really enjoy it. Uh, yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Loose mm-hmm. lips sink yeah. ships. Yeah. And you're getting as boozed oh. up as you can to sink as many ships as possible. We <laughs> know you. we know how you Keep are. You're no, yeah, you're a lot of a lot of hands shaking, a lot of here's a paddle, let me get you out of the shits creek that I just threw you into. Mm-hmm. And that some Jaeger. You are a part of the process though. Insiders are a massive piece of the entire <laughs> thing. Insiders, though, don't need to be the ones breaking this news. Kind of sad. Actually, very sad. 